My first day in the station was a bit of a revelation for, again, a teenager because um, I, I thought I'd better get dressed up for this and I borrowed a suit from my older brother, one of my brothers, and because I didn't have one, and I got down to this uh, address in Rattray Street in Dunedin and I'm looking around for the radio station and found that it was really just a, a concrete block building and the back of it had been converted into this lovely cute little radio station so I walked along and knocked on the door and uh, Mr. D.G. Gordon Mitchell Toots as he was uh, called by everybody opened the door, hello, hello George, hello come on in everybody was apparently called George, that's one of his little quirks so I became George, he was George, everybody was George so I went in and I was in this room and it had drapes around the walls and an announcer down at the end with uh, turntables obviously and a, a desk of sorts and a little four mica table out in front with a microphone for guests and uh, I think it wasn't long before I said where do you get all your records from and they said oh pull those drapes and I'd pull the drapes back and here was a record library all 45s all stacked A, B, C, D you know for the uh, for the artists C for Campbell sort of thing and P for Presley, who was just around at about then, you know, 1956, 57, 58. And um, so that's how they selected their records. And they used to have a just a, an ABC book uh, that you'd have at school, and any new records that came in were put in alphabetical order. You know, that way, that was the library. So they gave me a job. Uh, they said, you want to do some uh, cataloguing? And I said, oh, yeah, thanks very much. I'll do that. They says, no money, but you know, you can do that. So I did. And uh, I did that for a few months, I guess, maybe six months or so. But uh, they let me break my teeth, if you like, on this hit parade uh, and whatever it was, uh, any new person on, on the roster got to do tea time tunes at six o'clock. So you had to be there first. So I would uh, host some of those shows uh, while I was getting used to everything on my own. And so uh, that's how I got going. And eventually, as fate would have it, the, the roster had to change again because um, a gentleman who was doing a country and western show on a Thursday night passed away. Torrencio Riley was his name. And they said, well, are you interested in that and helping us out there? Of course I was because Thursday night was the big audience. That's when they had the request session straight after this country and western show so the country and western show went on about 7 15 odd times went for an hour and then the request session went on till half past 10 and everyone in town seemed to be listening to that request session i knew if i could get on a thursday night i had a big audience a bigger audience obviously than than wednesday so i must have had a little eye for the future then in those days and i started the country show but he does his own thing and he's got a legion of fans and it was one of the f first big hits that he had uh, called Guitar Town. We know where that is, don't we, in Nashville, Tennessee. What do you see as your greatest achievement? It's probably survival because it's a tough business, uh, the entertainment business, whatever form you're in, you've got to do what people want or be popular, I suppose, but I think if I did the right thing in life, um, I was popular enough to be liked and because of that I survived.